In this video, we will describe linear energy transfer and its application. We will also define relative biological effectiveness and identify this value for various radiation types. Additionally, we will contrast protracted and fractionated doses of radiation and their effects on biological harm. And lastly, we will discover biological factors that increase or decrease the radiosensitivity of a cell or organism. Linear energy transfer, or LET, measures the rate that energy is transferred from the ionizing radiation to soft tissues. It is one of the ways that we can measure or quantify the quality of the radiation. Simply stated, the LET is the energy spent or deposited per micrometer of tissue. LET is measured in kilovolts per micrometer, also called a micron. Another thing to note about LET is that it is inversely proportional to penetration. Let's take a look at an example of how LET is calculated in order to better illustrate the relationship of LET and penetration. The linear energy transfer measurement is the linear distance the energy has traveled within the tissue, and depending on the type of ionizing radiation, that energy will travel further. In the example on the left, the 100 kilovolts of X-ray energy traveled 8 micron or micrometers into the tissue where it interacted with an atom and was scattered and traveled another 10 micron into the tissue before it interacted with yet another atom and scattered in another direction for 12 micron before being completely absorbed. The same energy of 100 kilovolts of alpha radiation directed at the same tissue traveled only 4 micron in the tissue before being absorbed. To figure out the LET, we can divide the kilovoltage by the linear distance traveled in micrometers or microns, and this gives us the kilovolts per micron value of the LET. Starting with the 100 kilovolts of x-rays, we already established that 100 kV traveled a total of 30 micron. 100 kV divided by 30 micron equals 3.333 kilovolts per micron. For the 100 kilovolts of alpha particle radiation, the energy traveled 4 micron. So 100 kilovolts divided by 4 micron is 25 kilovolts per micron. We can tell by this example that alpha linear energy is 7.5 times greater than that of the X-ray linear energy transfer. The other observation we can make is regarding the relationship of penetration and LET. With the X-ray energy, the energy penetrated further for a total of 30 micron, and the LET was 3.3 kilovolts per micron, compared to the alpha energy that penetrated only 4 micron, and since all of that energy was deposited in a short distance, the LET was higher at 25 kilovolts per micron. Higher linear energy transfer in tissues means that there is more biological harm. Quality factors that are assigned to radiation types are based on the energy's linear energy transfer. You may recall that alpha particles have the highest LET and have a quality factor of 20 as compared to X-rays and gamma rays that have a much lower LET and a quality factor of 1. This is because alpha energy is more concentrated, causing increased biological harm in a smaller area. In other words, the probability of a target molecule being involved increases as LET increases. It's hard to talk about LET without bringing up relative biological effectiveness. Relative biological effectiveness, or RBE, is defined as the effectiveness of a certain type of radiation in causing a specific effect or disease. The value of the RBE is calculated by dividing a dose of standard radiation necessary to cause a specific effect by a dose of test radiation necessary to cause that same effect. The RBE is related to the linear energy transfer. Radiation that has a higher LET will also have a higher biological effectiveness rating, or RBE. So again, the RBE is determined by dividing the standard amount of radiation necessary to produce a specific result divided by the test amount of radiation to produce that same effect. An interesting note is that the standard radiation is typically 200 to 250 kilovolts peak, as this was the value historically used in early research of biological harm. I mentioned weighting factors applied to different types of radiation to determine the effective dose, which is measured in REM or sieverts. The RBE is how that weighting factor is determined, and it is based on the LET. 
As you can see in this chart, the LET, or linear energy transfer, of each type of radiation is listed here in the left column. And when you compare it to the RBE in the right column, there is a proportional relationship. As the energy deposited in the tissue increases, the relative biological effectiveness increases as well. Next, I want to discuss how delivering the radiation dose can affect the biological harm. Doses of radiation delivered over a longer period of time allow for cell repair and results in less biological harm. There are two ways to accomplish this. The first is protraction. A dose of radiation given over a few minutes will be far more harmful than the same dose of radiation extended over hours. The dose rate for the dose given over hours will be a much smaller dose rate than one given in minutes. Fractionation, on the other hand, is separating the exposures into portions with time in between each exposure. This also allows for the cells to repair and results in less effectiveness and biological harm to the tissue. Let's look at an example to help understand the difference between protraction and fractionation. Starting again with protraction, we can perform a radiograph using 70 kilovolts or kV at 25 milliampers or MA and using an exposure of 4 seconds. The same projection could also be performed at 70 kV using 400 MA and an exposure of 0.25 seconds long. Which exposure factors have the greatest radiation effectiveness or potential harm to the tissue? The answer would be 70 kV at 400 MA and 0.25 seconds because of the dose being given in a smaller time frame. There would be less time for the cells to recover. However, 70 kV at 400 MA and 0.25 seconds would be a more commonly seen technical factor selection because of reducing the chance of patient motion during the shortened exposure. So keeping with our previous example, Performing an exposure at 70 kV at 100 mass all at once is more harmful than four separate doses at 70 kV at 25 mass. The total exposures of each would be 100 mass, but the exposures allowing for more time in between would allow for the cellular repair to take place. This means that there would be less biological harm to the affected tissues. So far we have discussed the biological effects of types of energy and how the energy is delivered. Next, I want to discuss biological factors that affect radiosensitivity. The first is oxygen enhancement ratio, or OER. In the last video, we discussed radiolysis and the resulting hydroxyl free radical and hydrogen peroxide created from the irradiation of water molecules. Oxygen is a chemical modifier, and having more oxygen in the tissues being irradiated results in more production of the toxic hydroxyl free radicals and hydrogen peroxide. So the more oxygen in the tissues, the more radiation damage is observed. This phenomenon is described as a ratio where the dose required under anoxic conditions to produce a given effect over the dose required under aerobic conditions to produce the same effect. Anoxic is the term for without oxygen and aerobic is the term for with oxygen. There are a number of other biological factors that affect an organism's radiosensitivity. The very young and the very old are more sensitive to the effects of radiation. As stated in a previous video, an embryo is 10 times more sensitive to radiation than an adult. This is because of the rapid reproduction of cells. However, as we age, the reproduction of cells begins to slow. Our immune system weakens and the defense against cell mutations isn't what it once was, making those older more likely to develop cancer and experience cell death more frequently. Studies have also demonstrated that gender can affect how sensitive an organism's cells are to radiation. And ladies, in this competition, we are slightly ahead of men. Female cells have been shown to be slightly more resistant to the effects of radiation. And lastly, there are chemicals that have been shown to make an organism more sensitive to radiation and more resistant to radiation. Mega doses of vitamin K, so way more than you could possibly consume naturally, pyrimidines and methotrexate all make cells more radiosensitive, while sulfhydryl chemicals make the body more resistant to the biological effects of radiation. However, sulfhydryls might not even be worth mentioning since their use would likely kill you. I hope this video was helpful in gaining a better understanding of factors that affect biological harm and radiosensitivity. 
In the next videos, we will begin to look at effects that are caused by radiation in the overall organism.